Um, it's probably more useful to start telling me when it's like 15. What are we up to? No, it's 30 minutes? Cool. Whenever we have audio, we have audio. This is, um, this is as appropriately titled. You've got that. We're good. And I, I was supposed to talk for the gentleman. And can I, do you want me to keep talking? Can I start? We're good. Sweet. I say, let's start. And because I care about time, mostly because I have another engagement. Uh, I don't mean to be rude, but I've got to go intro a guy. And, and, um, and we wrote a very funny antler joke, and I don't want to miss it. So <laughs> pretty excited about the antler joke. So come to the keynote. Get your antler joke. You'll be fine. This, unfortunately, has no jokes. Um, so, concourse. I'm going to start with, this is an intro to concourse. This is an intro to the tutorial that uh, I started writing when I discovered concourse a year ago. Concourse was coming out of, of, of Pivotal. They had suffered under many, many CI systems. And there were some things they wanted. They wanted a dashboard that uh, does the, like the animation. You can sort of see work flowing through. Gray means the job's never been run before, but it looks more dramatic to go from gray to, to green. So the idea here is that uh, some inputs have changed. We've got some jobs running, which is the green with the yellow. And uh, as the work succeeds, that, that value of what was being tested. So let's say the controller, that's a resource. Let's say it's a, a Git repo. What's being passed through is, is one of the hashes, a specific commit is sort of being passed through as, as what we're testing. And it only gets passed through if the job before it passed. And so with this, we get a pipeline. And we might be modifying that controller task. We might just be pr producing things. We have, and a year later now, we have this wonderful ecosystem of what we call resources. Resources are how we touch the external world. And so um, I recently was f uh, forced into a situation where I had to go back to a client. The first client I ever, like, force this on them <laughs> because you get very excited about things and it, you know it's no fun to play with stuff at home so I took it to work and uh, and we used it for everything and we were having great success but I heard that one of their employees was unhappy through you know very roundabout um, public channel of reddit and uh, so I had to ask are you okay I I'm sorry I because I take responsibility I'm I was very excited about concourse but a year later I'm still really excited about it like of all the problems in my life, CI is not one of them, which cannot be spoken for most people who introduce CI into their lives. And so um, I'm still really excited about this. And uh, it turns out the client is, is still two uh, a year later. So uh, I'm really excited to share this stuff. Uh, and I, and I want, you know, getting started is, I think, the next step. So when a year ago, there was no, there was like, <laughs> there was this vagrant up and then that was it for the tutorial. Uh, well, that's, that's not quite kind of crack it. So I started evolving over time and other people have contributed to it and, and, and I thank all of them for it. So a little bit of a demo. Uh, this is Concourse's own tutorial. Uh, this is Concourse's own Concourse pipeline. This is the pipeline that builds Concourse. And the yellow flashing means that job is currently running. And the idea of this is that you might put it on a TV. And more dramatic is if you glance and you spot that uh, you know, one of them is, has failed. The idea is that would draw someone's attention. But you can also have resources that send messages to Slack, Qbot, or wherever it is that you know, you'd send messages to to bring attention to something not working. Um, this is the one for one of our projects uh, for Dingo Postgres. The idea is that we're building a Bosch release uh, in the test flight job. We're testing it in a, on a Bosch light. If it works, then we'll go and do a bigger test on a vSphere environment. And then whenever we want, we will run the ship it job, and that will cut a new, uh, a new final release. We then have another pipeline that takes that release and turns it into a pivotal tile. Somewhat arbitrary to split into two, but it's sort of like two teams. One team working on the release, the other team working on packaging and distribution to, to wherever. And so you get this nice petitioning of deliverables. This is me building something for your team, is one pattern that we use. And so here's the tutorial that uh, we'll see how far we get through in the, in the 24 minutes that's remaining.
I guess 24. Is it 24? 26. Bang. I'm going to use two, two minutes to tell a joke. Um, no. There's no jokes in this. Let's get through. All right. With three hours, we would all do this together. With 30, 26, 25 and a half minutes, we, I will do it. And you will see how good I am at doing my own tutorial. Um, the idea in the tutorial is you would boot up your own um, concourse uh, using Vagrant, and that's also what you'll find on the, uh, the, at the bottom of the home page. They, have a very, they now have a nice, very beautiful, as going 1.0, they did a great job on a website. It's a very simple pipeline. Um, that may, may make you think this is cool, but it may not teach you what's next. So uh, what we'll do is we'll sort of start from scratch. And I, I sort of wanted to build, um, I wanted to, to bring the ideas together one by one you know, you're trying to linearize all these complex ideas and build it up to the way you feel, ah, I get it. And so let's start with the smallest thing that we can play with, which is a task. If you've, um, it's, just imagine it's like a shell script. Like you, want to, you want to do something. It's a bit of functionality. You want some inputs, you do something to it, and there may be some outputs. Happiness, sadness, which in Unix land is, is one or a zero or one. That's... Um, you know, if, if Unix was recreated today, it would, you'd probably pass emoji around, but, but we have zero and one. Um, that would be awesome. Um, <laughs> just piping emoji. <laughs> um, so, let's get started. I, I will run this command and, and then talk about it. And I will do it. Um, so I have targeted a concourse, and it's actually the concourse that's ours running on, on a vSphere environment somewhere in Europe. Um, when you do this, you'll have a vagrant machine. And, and the reason for doing it is the Docker images that I'm using are big, and it's, it's a bit sucky to bring them down to my laptop on the same internet that you're using um, to do BitTorrent. And, um, and I, I don't want to be rude. So the idea here is amongst all of that, that was the output. So it's a little messy, perhaps, but, but verbose. When it comes to CI systems, you care about nothing except when an error happens. And at the time an error happens, you want to see all the verbosity you can get. So let's live with verbosity. All right, but the outcome of this. Now, why was that? Well, let's look at this task. A task is described as a YAML file. Um, and the most important part in the context of where we're at right now, as we're just getting started, is this bit. This is us running a command. Where does this get run? I mean, I could run this command here. We go echo hello world. And, um, you know, there's nothing for you to understand why that, that's not where it got run. It got run inside a container somewhere, you know, wherever I've got concourse running. And, um, and, but inside, you know, of some image. And later on, when we start to build up you know, actual functionality, you're going to say, well, I, I need Git, or I need the CF command line tool, or I need the Bosch tool. Wh where do those things come from? And they come from the, the base image resource. So when we use Cloud Foundry, we don't really, uh, one in a thousand people might wonder, wonder about how do I change the base OS, um, you know, which are, uh, are called uh, stacks in Cloud Foundry. In Concourse, it's very common to build a bespoke image to use. It's kind of the one you're going to use. It's got your dependencies. Super important, I believe, that you own that. Don't go around borrowing some other team's you know, image. Images are free. Build your own. Know exactly what's in it. Um, all right. So in this case, didn't really matter. It's just some image. But what if we ran... Uh, and so we're running... It's a, it looks a little complex. Let's just go through this command. We're running the fly tool. Most things in concourse have an aviation naming system. The CLI is called fly. Um, we explicitly target which concourse. Um, like many things in concourse, there are, learn there are lessons hard learned from living with Bosch and Cloud Foundry. If you listen to any of my other talks, I'll tell you that one day I ran Bosch delete deployment accidentally on the wrong Bosch. Because it's really easy to do that because you have shared state about what was the last one. And so uh, when they did concourse, they said, soon we're not going to do that. You always have to specify explicitly which one you're talking about, even if it annoys you. Um, 
So that's why we have target. And after a while, you start wishing that, like the CF tool, explicitly. You can't. You cannot even explicitly target something with a CF tool. Like you have to do a login and then the command and hope that that's atomic enough that you don't have something parallel crossing over. Um, so I like this. All right, we're running execute command, which is us playing with tasks. Typically, you don't play with tasks. Typically, we build pipelines, but we're building up. Let's run this task. This one is going to use a different base image, and it's going to run the uname minus a command. Downloads it for the first time. Actually, downloads it a lot. But it's finished pulling that base image. You don't really need to see that. Right? You don't need to know that the image got downloaded, unless you do, because it didn't work. All right? I mean, we've all had build failures, not because our thing was broken, but because something we depended on upon didn't work. And Docker Hub is a thing you depend on in this case. So let's be explicit so that if that fails, we know that's the reason and we can just rerun the task. And here is our output of running. Uh, so running, there's the command we ran, and that was the result. And so we can see it's obviously dependent upon the fact we were running an Ubuntu image. But let's have a look at that, that task. So there was the command we ran. Um, you might wonder, why do we split the name and the arguments into two? And I can only guess this is because of Go. This is the way you run an executable in Go is, is that thing. And I just assumed that instead of fixing that, they just said, let's just pass that on to the, the user. Um, and uh, it's annoying. And, uh, but here is the base image we, we picked. And we can pick other ones and run other commands. Okay? So here we're just borrowing other images. You will, as you use Concourse, learn how easy it is to build Docker images because we have a Docker image resource. It is so easy. Uh, and you'll make your own, and then you'll use them in your own images. So you get to build whatever dependencies you need, your team, you, your team alone. Actually, I'm going to say this as many times as like, there are people at Stark and Wayne who disagree with that and like to share them. And I think that's a terrible idea. Well, I, I'm not sharing yours. I have all my own, James. And because um, <laughs> they're free. <laughs> Now, there are, I mean, it's a, there's a reasons, right? Are we all bumping them, or is someone not bumping them? But all right, I just wanted to... There are many people at Stark and Wayne who, who um, are wonderful at this stuff, and, and uh, what every, most of what I know has come in part from uh, what they've shared or, uh, or the, CI, the Concourse team themselves, who have their own Slack account. The people that make Concourse, super engaged in helping you be successful. So once you've learned a few things, they'll ask you, answer your questions. Um, did I just palm that off? I think I did. Yeah. Sorry. What did I just say? Don't ask me. All right. Next is um, inputs. So there's this idea. I'll just I'll quickly show. There's this idea that uh, the last task we just ran had no inputs. Like it brought up a container, it um, ran the command, and we're done. But that's it was dull, right? The only thing we could use was whatever is on the image, and that's relatively static. So we want to inputs. So let's play with inputs. Firstly, let's play with inputs in a way that's bad, or not bad, but you know, um, doesn't work. Oops. A nervous press of the caps lock. And uh, so if you're playing with the execute command, you'll see this that it's, it complains. And similarly, in a pipeline environment, where our pipeline is made up of running these tasks. If you forget to pass an input, it will complain similarly. So, what? How do we fix this? Well, here we have the, uh, the minus i or minus input flag. And then the question is, well, what's an input? Is it a file? Is it a folder? Is it, do I just point to Dropbox? Where do I, what is it, and how am I playing with it? Uh, we have a very simple API uh, or you know, experience, which is it's a folder of things. It could be a folder of folders, but it's a folder. And so let's play. Let's, uh, so the name that it complained about was called some important input. And if we satisfy that, we give it a, a, a directory to the, to the things, it will package that group of things up and, and upload it, which is uh, super convenient. You know, if we have enough internet. And again, we're just playing with this execute command to sort of understand. I mean, you can use execute. It, it means you can start to do your Java testing in a test environment rather than on your laptop. You don't need to have all that stuff. You know, super wonderful if you don't have a lot of uh, bandwidth to bring down dependencies. 
like Maven loves to download the other half of the internet. Um, um, so like, it's like the, it's the it's the happy counterpart to, to BitTorrent. Um, one downloads movies, the other one downloads all of Java. Um, and uh, you don't always have to to provide if the name if the name of the folder you're in is the same, then then it's optional. Um, all right. Input. So now we have a way to bring things into our container. We're still running a fixed command, but we have variable content to work on. But what we can do now is we can run a variable script. Like, let's let the inputs, this isn't arbitrary, this is what every pipeline does. We bring, like, what commands to run, what script we're going to run, is as variable as the things being pipelined. Like it's something, it's, it's almost like you have to keep this idea in your head. There is the work we're passing through, and then there's the code that we're running. And they're passed through similarly. Um, so sometimes you can get confused, not only about what, not confused is not the right word, sometimes you have to keep track of not only what's being worked on, but what version of the, the script is being worked on at the same time. So we're going to pass in some commands. And this is, uh, we call them task scripts. Da -da, da -da, da -da. All right, so task number three. There is no way I'm getting through all of this. Just to manage all expectations. But more importantly, by the end, you should go, right, I know how to get through the first seven. I, the, the next seven are really easy. Um, all right, so we ran, it's the same idea. We ran the uname command, but instead of, instead of, like, sorry, instead of running it directly, we ran a task. Uh, sorry, we ran a shell script. This is the pattern we use a lot. A YAML file that describes what shell script to run. Um, now, in order, as, as I have led you through this path, we've, you know, in order to run that shell script, we need to bring it into the container somehow. We bring things into containers with inputs, and then we want to run it, so we have to reference, and we said that, um, that the inputs are just folders of things, and so let's go back up to here when we ran that. Uh, the, the command we ran in the previous one was the ls command, the list, you know, show me files. So if the, if the name of the input was some important input, you will find in that container a directory called some important input. It's so easy. And so if you want to run a script that's inside that input, you just reference it relative to that, that name. And so I'm going to say that the input is called 03 task scripts. Why would I give it that ridiculous name? Because that's the name of the folder. So either, either I have a clean name and I have to explicitly pass it in or I just give it the same name as, as that and it, I'm going to explain that better. All right, but that's why. So we have this, this, this shell script. Here is our shell script. Once we're inside the container, we can find that shell script in under, underneath the input name slash script name. So when we ran it, uh, it's going to take the time. I could also go, you know, explicitly pass that. Um, all right, so explicitly provide it, but because it's the same as the name, I don't have to. I could task show name YAML. Yeah, this is a terrible input name. Let's call it scripts. All right, or CI. That might be a good one. Oops. If I change the name of the input, therefore where I find it on that machine is going, to, is going to change. If I run my fly command, my uh, execute command, we will get the error that we don't, um, are not providing the CI command. I have two options. Either I could rename the folder that I'm in, or I could explicitly you know, match the two. Uh, all right, so we're just sort of saying this is the folder. All right, so we're building up. This is the idea of a task. You'll see this so often that if you don't follow it right now, you'll play with this so often that, that I just wanted to start with the smallest possible thing. That's task, so let's build a pipeline. The basic pipeline. The idea of a pipeline is this, the same idea. So in a way, we've done three steps prior to what's on the, on the website. Um, if we look at the website, you can see here, 
that we have this run section. We saw that before in each of the three steps, but we were run something. We specified a doc, the, the, the image resource. I don't know if there's actually other ways other than Docker image, but conceptually there is. And uh, we said that there's pl uh, Linux. Now, this is where I do know there is, there is a Windows uh, environment that you can run and, an, and a Mac one. Why? Well, you might be building executables or you know, final deliverables, and you send those requests in parallel off to those machines, and they'll send, the, you know, they'll send the results off to wherever. And so you can get the tasks running where you need them. And that's why, you know, on a Windows machine, perhaps you're not using Docker. Perhaps. All right, we're uploading a pipeline. And it gives us the URL of where we'll find our pipeline. Let's go look. This is so exciting. Your first pipeline, you must be proud. At the top, it's blue. Blue means paused. By default, a pipeline starts life not running. Paused. Why? Because it might be destructive. Like, it, you know, if once we learn about triggers and, and those sorts of things, you know, your pipeline might run straight away and you might not quite be ready for that. So they just default to paused. Unpausing it is uh, relatively simple. This is all our pipelines of, of what we play with. Uh, where is my hello world? Down the bottom, we click on the little, little arrow with our baby voice. And now it's unpaused. There is also uh, the fly, um, where is it? It's gonna be unpaused job command you can run so you can script it. In fact, uh, and, and it warns you there to remember to unpause. Now, this pipeline doesn't have, let me go back, this pipeline has no inputs. You'll see, well, uh, sorry, we looked at pipeline inputs here. The inputs are the black things. These represent some external thing in the world. Git repo, an S3 object, a, um, what's another good input? What? These are wonderful ideas. Docker image. Um, Whatever you want to process an input, and if you can make your own resources. Um, see how it's a bright, it's a solid line? That means it's a trigger. That means if, it, if Concourse discovers a new version of that thing, it just keeps polling for new versions. If it finds one, it will run the next, these, these jobs. If it's a dotted line, then it's a dependency, but not, won't trigger. Compare that to our job. It's gray because we've never run it before. It has no black thingies coming in. So no, no way to trigger this unless we manually give it a kick, which involves clicking. All right, the little plus button is uh, a way you can you know, manually start the job, and it finished very quickly. Let's make that go again. So yellow means running and this one black line, each black line represents a task. A little hard to imagine this when there's only one, so let's quickly look at, at a more complicated task. Here is each of these little tasks running, or there, an arrow means that it fetched something from the internet. Um, the little carrot with an underscore symbolizing a prompt means a script was run, a task like we've been playing with, and an up arrow means we push something out to the internet. Concourse has no state that you can borrow. There is no build numbers, no little handy things that, that you might have used from Jenkins or whatever. Anything that you want to know about or, or, or pass through, you have to externally manage. And we have, uh, uh, so say you want to do a, a, a version number, then that's called, we have a semver, a, 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 a semantic versioning resource, and you can manage that yourself. And now you own it. It's not hidden inside Concourse, it's yours. So, that would be a more advanced one. I have this little ditty in my head from my grandfather. All right. Um, task extracted into resources. Let's have a look at our pipeline. Um, I sort of pointed out before that if we... Let's compare the pipeline to our original task. Our original task ran Hello World. Um, you can see down here. Uh, oh, look, we have that bit. 
We had the image resource. Oh, there that is. And we specified that we wanted to run it on a worker that was uh, a Linux platform, and that's that there. In fact, this section here is exactly the same as this little snippet that we had. And so you can put them exactly into the pipeline. But your pipeline is going to very quickly become a very long YAML file. Um, and one thing that most of us do is we move it from flattened in the pipeline and putting it in, back into the file like we've been playing. So let's go through the, the thinking of this. We're going to keep this file. We want, this is our task file. Right? This is the file we, we want to want. This is the file we want to run to, that describes how to run Hello World. But when our pipeline runs, if you can just imagine where we're going, the pipeline will run, it will run our task, a container will come up, busy box, whatever. How will it actually get hold of this, this uh, YAML file? With an input. So we have the idea of inputs. Now on our laptop, I, I used the fly execute command. Like I had the input on my laptop and I just pushed it up. In a pipeline, we need, we need to get the input from somewhere and then pass it in. And these are called resources. And that's the, the little up and down arrows. So in step five, we will look at, um, at this. So this is the change from red to green, like, like Bosch. We're going to remove the, the, the task. The task has a name. Um, and previously, we explicitly described that config. And now we want to push it back out into a file. In order to do that, uh, this is that we use the file, and that is, you know, that that path that was going to be in. We need to use a resource. All right, so let's talk about resources. Resources are things on the internet, things we might get, things we might put, and and the type of this one is a Git repo. Conveniently, this very Git repo that I'm playing in, it's not getting it from my laptop, it's getting it from GitHub. So concourse is running. It's going to go and get that. It's going to download that Git repo. It's going to give it the name resource tutorial, and then my task. All that yellow, uh, green, and blue may be more confusing than, than. Okay, so there is our two steps. We went from one step to two. Um, first step, get a resource. Second step, use that resource to run a command. Remember, we, we have two things flowing through a pipeline. Things that we want to work on and the commands of how we want to do that work. Um, you know, you might wish it was a little more explicit, what was what, but in a way it's, it's nice that those two ideas have the same, same sort of system. All right, so we're going to find that under here and you know, what will it look like? Well, it will look like this command that we've been playing with. That's exactly the, the that's exactly the, the the YAML file that was. So instead of fly execute, uh, concourse is going to fetch that and run it. All righty. Now we still have no trigger, so we still have to press plus to make that run. Oh yeah, good one. All right. So now we have two steps. We have the fetching, the the down arrow, the getting of a of a of a resource. It's not explicit here that it's a Git resource. That's back in the pipeline, but this is sort of the, the Git information. And then this step, use that to, to run. We go back to our pipeline view, which is what might be on the dashboard. We can now see our black box. <laughs> Very exciting. It, it, it's it's a pipeline. You're a patient crowd, and I appreciate you for it. Um, dotted line means no trigger. All right, some of you are following along. And open to interactivity. I actually learned once that in a presentation you've got like 30 seconds to teach the audience whether that's going to be an interactive session or not. We are well past 30 seconds, so you're off the, you're off the hook. Um, all right, we'll skip that. Uh-huh, let's get to 10. And is that funny? There was no funny. There's nothing funny. There's nothing funny about this. This is serious work. Um, all right. Um, 
It's very serious. We, you know it's serious because I'm not telling any hilarious jokes. Um, I care a lot about this. It's really interesting stuff. So now, we've, we've passed through resources for the purposes of, of providing the scripts to run. So now let's provide an input, a resource, for the normal reason you'd want inputs, which is things to work on. So in this one, we're going to work on a, on a, on a, on a Go application, Go language. You don't care, but it's, if you use Go, great. If you don't, you don't. It's like we're going to bring down some source code, and we're going to run its own tests. Now, in this case, it is a Go application, and I choose to use an image that already has Go built into it. So we're going to use this image. Um, we're going to move to having, you know, there's, so we now have two inputs. One is the input that will have the commands to run, which happens to be this tutorial. And the other one will be the app with some code in it that we're going to run the test. This is not common. Typically, you would put these two things together in such a simple example. The resource app resource would normally be the one that had the commands in it. That's, what, that's the pattern you will see. There is some sort of central repo that's, that's being worked on. And it's the most convenient to put all the, the pipelines and the shell scripts in a CI folder. That's the common, uh, common place to put it. When you start looking at other people's repos, as we all do, we copy and paste other people's work, and you'll copy and paste that pattern. All right. Uh, we're now going to go down to SP, standing for set pipeline, UP, which means unpause pipeline, and the new pipeline name will be simple app. So we're going to give up our um, give up our hello world pipeline. And then we'll finish. So now we have our two inputs. One of them is a trigger. The way triggers work, or the, it, it sort of polls every minute or so, and then it will start the thing. So now we have this yellow. I didn't have to press the plus button. Let's have a look how it's going. So we have our two inputs. We get the tutorial. We got the app. And then the next task downloaded that... Uh, Next task downloaded that Golang container image from, from Docker Hub, and we ran the command that, uh, that, let's have a look what command we ran. We ran the run task run sh, and you can sort of see that was the command we ran. There is, um, I'm gonna wrap up. There is, uh, that was step 10 on the, just the readme of that tutorial. And if we go to the top, uh, just in this README, which is like the minimum, you, you, once you've gone through these 14 steps, um, you now basically have the basic understanding of, of how you might go about doing anything. You'll understand the idea of resources. We haven't yet done a push resource of modifying something, which is obviously super important, otherwise you're just testing things. You, know, you can manufacture goods and services. All right, that's probably overstating it. Um, <laughs> this, I call these things robots, which in the context of, of our keynote from Monday is uh, both appropriate and hugely inappropriate. Um, but a lot, as you can see, a large portion of, of, of the, you know, what's happening at Stark and Wayne, we have pipelines for, both client things, although most client things have their own pipeline, a lot of our open source, uh, miscellaneous tasks, and uh, this is working out well for us. Uh, follow on, in both in terms of that, that concourse tutorial repo, that you can follow along at home. We will start to take some of the, uh, this training and, and start to put it on uh, this uh, video's site. And kind of has, uh, I, I've always been envious, uh, not envious, that's the wrong word, um, a huge fan of the Rails cast from when I was doing Rails. Um, and so with that sort of idea in mind, we'd, we'd like to share both introductory things and little edge things. I know we've, we've always done blog posts. Uh, I think videos are a nice way to sort of describe things. And so over time, you know, hopefully they become you know, something you can come and, and, and use because we can't all come together like this as often as we'd all like. <laughs> Except on Boxing Day in Australia. <laughs> Concourse tutorial finishes at 11 sharp. That's on the cricket. Um, anyone would like to ask a question? That's awesome. I appreciate you're all time sensitive. 
and scared. Um, <laughs> yes, Michael. So you said it didn't make sense to share images, but then you showed us an example where you used images of somebody else's doctor image. So what's going on there? Um, no, that's an excellent question. Um, in that sense, and, and obviously when you make your own image, you, you, there's a base you might want to borrow. So if, if this was a, of some importance to me, I might build an image where I'd say, you know, from that, that one I just used, build my own. But at least now I own that, that tag, right? So it's not, you know, otherwise that might just wander along at 1.6 something else and I break and I don't know why. Um, and, and you look at some of our pipelines, often there is this one job that builds that image. And its inputs might be the upstream image and some other things. And so it might still be building that image full time, but at least now we're tracking it. And we can see if it's, you know, that's the root cause of things. Uh, sorry, his question was why I, I made the comment that I like to build on my own images. Why did I then only use other people's? To which I snarked at him and answered. And we have another question. question is in the pipeline in the pipeline we, we say that the task has a name and the question is why why have a name and why is it arbitrary um, I'll tell I'll show you where it goes and then you can say ah that's kind of useful um, so let's have a look at our hello world actually it was not that one it was going to be where are we this one so the name of the task appears in the black bar. And so you can sort of, if it fails, you have the ability to take that token back to the, the pipeline and go, right, what, what was that supposed to be doing? Um, and it doesn't have to be, you can put white space as well. I, some, I, I don't see a lot of white space ones, but you could put a white spaced string in there. So that's what that's for, so you can go and find. Thank you very much for, uh, for coming.